Hello everyone, Hello. thank you so much for joining us today. And um, we're just gonna give a few more minutes while people enter. Hello, Natalie. So I think um, we can start um, now. Um, so just to give everyone a short background, uh, I'm Saif Jan and I'm the Marketing Secretary for Knowledge Train. Um, Knowledge Train and Agile KLC are in partnership. Today we have Nick with us. So Nick, thank you so much for joining. Pleasure. Um, just before I do head over to Nick, um, right at the end, after Nick gives his presentation, there will be a Q&A session. So um, while Nick gives his presentation, if you do have any questions, please write them down in the chat and right at the end, we'll go through them all. Thank you, everyone. So Nick, over to you. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's an uh, absolute delight to, uh, to be invited uh, to present on this webinar uh, on behalf of Knowledge Train. And um, just so that you're aware, um, I can only see the slides on the screen at the moment, so I can't see any of the the, uh, the chat window. So uh, that's why Sev Khan suggested that uh, uh, at the end of the session, I'll take questions uh, and answers. So um, uh, today's session is about um, giving you some thoughts and ideas and strat strategies for your individual but also uh, team success. And uh, I thought we'd start because I think some of you have connected with me on LinkedIn already, but uh, uh, for the majority of you, you probably haven't. So I thought best to give you a little bit of background as to who I am uh, and why I call myself a teamworkologist. So um, a teamworkologist is, is a, a word, that a phrase that I came up with because uh, I wanted to uh, try and uh, give people an understanding of what I do. So uh, a teamworkologist is a person who studies the dynamics of teamwork, uh, and I use this knowledge to help teams become more effective uh, and more efficient and achieve greater success. Uh, and I do this through uh, through my company called Engagement Works. And uh, for those of you who like to know, uh, I reside in Bournemouth, uh, which is on the south coast in Dorset. Uh, but originally, uh, my city of birth is is Plymouth uh, in Devon. So, a uh, bit of background about me before we get into the to the meat of the uh, the webinar. Uh, I'm a behavioural psychologist, and I got my accreditation uh, when I used to work for Barclays Bank. That's where my career started. I worked for Barclays for 20 years. Uh, and um, during that 20 years, when I uh, became a project leader and an operational leader, um, I got my accreditation in behavioral psychology to give me a better understanding of a who I was, uh, but also uh, who the people were in my team so that I could motivate and inspire them uh, in the ways that met their needs. Uh, over my career, after I left Barclays for the last uh, 20 plus years, I've been working with teams around the globe uh, to help them become more effective, more efficient and uh, achieve greater success. So uh, these are some of the companies that I've worked with. Uh, I've worked with hundreds of companies and I've profiled thousands of individuals uh, during my, the, the last 20 plus years. Uh, and when I'm not working with teams, uh, the other thing that I do is uh, I speak at conferences. So uh, I've spoken at conferences throughout the world. Uh, I've spoken at over 500 conferences about teamwork uh, and achieving high performance. Uh, 
predominantly in the UK, but I've uh, also spoken at conferences uh, in uh, most of the capital cities of, of Europe uh, and then further afield. I've spoken in the, the US uh, and uh, the Far East and the Middle East. Uh, the further, furthest from the UK being uh, Bali. I spoke in Bali just before uh, we hit uh, the pandemic. Uh, and the last thing uh, about me is that based on the work that I do with teams, uh, I created a model called Team Dynamics. And Team Dynamics uh, measures 16 areas of teamwork. And I'm going to give you a bit of an understanding of that model to get you to consider how you might uh, measure different aspects of your teamwork. Uh, the last project that I undertook uh, was during COVID and uh, nobody wants a team, team development specialist or a conference speaker when we were all in lockdown. Uh, so I'm not one to sit here twiddling my thumbs. So uh, I thought, right, what I'll do is write a, a book based on my knowledge and experience. So uh, I wrote a book that was published in March 2022 called uh, Team Lead Succeed. And uh, it's become an Amazon bestseller. And it's all about behaviors, teamwork and leadership, hence the title. Uh, I started off with team, first of all, because there are more team members than leaders in the world. Uh, so I wanted to write a book that team members could actually utilize and make use of. And uh, this is one of the quotes that I use. Great teamwork just doesn't happen. It happens in teams that work at being great. So Team Lead Succeed is a resource for teams to use to, to help them achieve success. And um, as we're in the, uh, the world of project management, I was delighted that um, uh, it appeared a review appeared in project which is the uh, 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 association for project management's uh, journal and uh, the great review was completed by uh, Richard Noble who some of you may know he held the world record uh, land speed record in thrust two so um, I'm going to share some snippets from my experience, but also from, from Team Lead Succeed. So what are we going to do in the webinar? Uh, first of all, I'm going to give you an understanding of the, the reasons why projects fail. Um, then we're going to look at what underpins the success of KPIs, key, key performance indicators. And then uh, I'll share some learning about the importance of knowing how effective and efficient your teamwork is. And finally, give you suggestions uh, from Team Lead Succeed to help you and your team achieve high performance and greater success. So uh, I hope you enjoy the, the next uh, 50 plus minutes of this webinar. Okay, so a question, who wants their project? To succeed and um, no need to answer this because I'm sure your answer uh, is going to be yes. Uh, we all want our projects to succeed. However, unfortunately, um, not all of them do succeed. Uh, and based on, on research from white papers and research uh, that you can easily find uh, throughout the World Wide Web, 70% uh, of projects fail to achieve their desired goals. And when I've studied these white papers and the research about projects, uh, there's a theme that occurs. And the top three reasons why a lot of projects fail are the following. One, a poor understanding of the skills of the team. Um, which is quite frightening. You know, we, we sit with people um, sometimes in, in offices and now with hybrid working, uh, a lot of the time we're on conference calls, etc., with our team members. But a lot of team, a lot of teams don't understand the skills that they've got. And when I talk about skills, I'm talking about two sorts of skills. I'm talking about behavioral skills. 
uh, so that's how we communicate, how we make decisions, um, our body language, so behavioural skills of the team. But equally important is an understanding of the technical skills that uh, your team members bring to the team. So have they got the technical skills of being uh, an accredited project manager? Uh, have they got some other technical skills such as, you know, they're really good at um, Excel spreadsheets or they're great at putting together um, uh, presentations using PowerPoint or uh, Canva or other uh, such tools. So really good to understand both the behavioral skills and the technical skills of teams, because that is a it certainly is a blocker in achieving uh, project success. Secondly, lack of common understanding of the team's purpose. And I'll explore that with you in a little more detail later on. But your team's purpose is what does your team exist to do? Um, what does that enable and what are the benefits? And then finally, little or no understanding of how effective or efficient teamwork is. So these are the big items why projects fail to achieve their desired goals. And um, as I said, this was research that I undertook based on um, uh, information that was readily available to me on, on the Internet. And I tested this out when I spoke at a conference in, in China, in Beijing. And um, I just asked the delegates. There were 170 delegates from around the world. And uh, I asked them this question, you know, what is it that um, holds back your project from succeeding? And again, they reiterated uh, a couple of things that I shared from that research. We don't know the skills of our colleagues and our team. Uh, and secondly, we don't have the tools to help us understand how good or bad our teamwork is. So um, certainly that research that I undertook um, was echoed by those people at that conference so um i've done some research myself in terms of uh, the model that i created and the the project teams that uh, have used it initially to understand their teamwork and um sevgan is going to to share a poll at this this moment in time um just to get you um thinking about uh effectiveness and efficiency of teamwork so Sefgan, if you could um, share the poll that would be appreciated and I, at the moment i can't see the poll results on my screen so Sefgan, if you could give me an indication of um what people have said that would be appreciated. Yep, will do. Oh, we've got a tie. Interesting. Interesting. Oh. Do let me know. <laughs> oh. Okay, so we're five percent. We have um three people who selected five percent okay. and then ten percent we have eight people and then twenty percent we have eight people again okay. and then twenty five percent we have one person and then sixty percent we have um zero okay great um okay i'm going to put you out of your misery um in in terms of uh, which groups of people were were correcting this um in terms of um which teams are high performing which percentage of teams are high performing only 10 percent of teams are high performing so those eight people who um chose 10 percent, well done to you um and average performance 50 percent of teams which frighteningly leaves 40 percent of uh teams being actually dysfunctional um frightening statistics but these are these are statistics from project teams that have have used my team dynamics model to um 
uh, measure their effectiveness and efficiency for the first time of using it. And um, quite frightening in, in terms of only 10% actually uh, high performing for the first time. And I think <clears throat> based on working with those teams, there are a number of problems that um, have caused this ineffectiveness, inefficiency in their teamwork. And uh, what they've shared with me is that um, a lot of the problem is historic learning. Historic learning that's been given to uh, leaders in how to lead their project teams um, and also to team, team members in terms of how to run um, project teams effectively and efficiently. Uh, secondly, too much focus on task. Uh, we work in a very fast-paced world these days, uh, and quite often project teams have been forced down this route of making sure that uh, tasks are completed uh, on time, and sometimes that causes uh, big problems in itself. And the third thing is, um, again, feedback from these teams that quite often there's too much reliance on software. Software is excellent, you know, uh, in, its, in, in its right place and used at the appropriate time. However, some project teams, there is an over-reliance on using software uh, as the, the engine to drive forward the, the project itself. So these are the problems that people have said that they faced. And again, I like to test out what people say to me. And um, I tested this out at a European program directors conference that I spoke at and uh, just simply said to the European program directors, what are the things that you talk about when you get together with your project teams uh, for your, your team meetings? And these were the things that they came up with on the, the flip chart. We recorded them and uh, they said they talked about risk. They talked about scope, schedules, progress, key performance indicators, costs, safety, margins, profit, uh, and PTP, which, forgive me, um, uh, fails my memory as to what PTP stood for. However, uh, there was a common theme here is that um, they actually weren't talking about people or relationships, uh, very much uh, focused on tasks. So I think the solution is, quite simply, we've got to focus as project teams and individuals, we've got to spend more time on understanding who's in our team and how we can enhance our teamwork, because that's going to drive your projects forward. Uh, however, there is this caveat that I found that far too often leaders and also teams they're expected to deliver high performance, yet they're unaware of the tools that will help them to achieve it. And I don't know if that rings true with, with you in your project, but a lot of the time, uh, understanding who is in your team uh, and how effective your teamwork is, teams aren't given those tools or they don't understand those tools uh, in, in their organizations. Uh, and I think the key thing is what they tend to do is they focus on their KPIs. So a lot of projects are really focused on their key performance indicators uh, and aren't aware of other tools that will help and support their projects. Uh, I'm sure that you use KPIs on your, on your projects and invariably those key performance indicators um will be similar to some of these on the on the screen uh you're likely to have key performance in indicators around uh, your budget your project spend um your deadlines uh the workload that you've got coming up uh and the deadlines that that have got to be achieved so i'm sure that all of you have some sort of key performance indicators that are similar to this uh and most key performance indicators that project teams use um, uh, come back to this model here. Uh, you may have seen this model. You may have heard of it. 
Um, it's uh, it's often called the iron triangle uh, or the cost time quality triangle. It was uh, created in 1969 by uh, a guy called Dr. Martin Barnes. And basically what this iron triangle says is that if you um, uh, have to change one of the apexes, it will have an impact on the other two apexes. So, uh, for instance, if you um, need to increase the quality of your, your project, uh, invariably that will probably take longer in terms of time. Uh, and certainly your costs will increase because um, you're going to have to pay people for a longer period of time. So that's an example where uh, increased quality has this impact on both time and cost. And equally, you can do the same with the, the other two apexes there of that triangle. Um, however, key performance indicators are only as good as your teamwork. So um, if your teamwork is not effective and efficient, then it will have an impact on your key performance indicators. And this is what a lot of project teams uh, don't think about. They don't think about the effectiveness and efficiency of their teamwork and wholly and solely are focused on their key performance indicators. And when I talk about effectiveness and efficiency, effectiveness is doing the right thing so that's your purpose what your team exists to do and efficiency is about doing things right so that's using the skills the the knowledge and experience uh, and uh, of your team members um, in the best way possible uh, and also making sure that you are resourceful with uh, other things that you have to hand, so resourceful in terms of uh, of your costs and maybe utilizing software uh, to help you achieve your goals. So there is a uh, marked difference between when we talk about effectiveness and efficiency. So effectiveness, doing the right thing. Efficiency is doing things right. And um, when I spoke at a conference in Singapore about high performance teamwork. Um, I just threw out the question to the uh, the 600 project managers uh, that were at that conference and just asked them, how many of you measure how effective and efficient your teamwork is? And uh, surprisingly, or maybe not, only 1% measured their teamwork. And again, that has a direct correlation to uh, how well you perform against your key performance indicators. And we've got to remember that it's people that deliver projects and we achieve success through our teamwork. So actually understanding how effective and efficient our teamwork is, is vital um, because if you don't understand how effective and efficient your teamwork is, how do you know how much better you could be as a team. So there's two foundations upon which you achieve high performance teamwork. The first is, as I mentioned earlier, knowing who is in your team. And that is about knowing who is in your team from a behavioral skills perspective, but also from the technical skills as well. So um, behavioral skills, probably the easiest thing you can do to understand behavioral skills is to use personality profiles. I don't know if some of you use them already. There's uh, quite a few in, in the marketplace. The, the well-known ones uh, are MBTI, uh, Myers-Briggs, Myers-Briggs type indicator, which is gives you 16 different aspects of your personality. Um, uh, there's DISC, is another one. I use a colorful one called Clarity 4D, uh, which measures your personality uh, based on the psychology of Carl Jung and uses four colors, red, yellow, green, blue, to give you an understanding of what your behavioral makeup is. So 
behavioral skills we can get from personality profiling, um, technical skills we can get from various sources. We can get them from people's CVs. Uh, we can get them from HR records. Uh, we can get them from asking them, you know, going up and saying, what technical skills do you bring to the team? So that's an important aspect uh, and foundation. The other aspect is, uh, as I mentioned, knowing how effectively and efficiently you work together as a team. And this is why I created the, the team dynamics model, which I'm going to just share with you um, in a moment, because I understood that um, teams sometimes don't understand what's going wrong or what's working well within their team. And as a team leader, I was very inquisitive when I used to lead my teams. I'd ask them lots of different questions about teamwork to understand and make sure we play to our strengths, but also if there were challenges that we discussed them uh, as a team and we came up with practical ideas to, to overcome them. And that for those, those questions that I asked my team, team members, they formed the basis of this model that I created to measure 16 areas of teamwork. Um, so, there are 16, what I believe, elements of teamwork that we can measure and we should understand if we are to achieve high performance. And uh, first of all, there are what I call the, the red elements, and you can see them on screen now. Uh, at the top, it's accountability. So do we know who is accountable for what within our team? Uh, decision making, which is who has the authority to make what decisions? Purpose, uh, which I said we'll go into in a bit more depth in a moment, is about understanding what your team exists to do. And vision is more aspirational. It's what do we want to achieve as a team in two years, three years' time? So that's a, a aspirational uh, vision of the future. Uh, going back to purpose, purpose is, is what I call operational. That's what we do here and now, whereas vision is aspirational. So I call these elements strategic actions. Then we have um, what I call the blue, the blue areas. So this, this underpins everything you do as a team. So it's about planning. Do you have plans in place for your project team? Uh, are those plans actually just written and then put in a drawer or are they updated on a regular basis so planning really important do we have effective and efficient processes you know if if you were uh, not in the office for uh, maybe a month you were off ill uh, or off on your travel somewhere um, do you have processes that are written down that people can pick up and run with uh, reflection uh, so the bottom left, uh, do you take time out from actually doing your day to day, day activities uh, and sit down with your team and reflect on what's going well and maybe not what is not going so well? So a lot of teams, once the project starts going, uh, it's like that snowball that's uh, rolling down the hill. It just gets faster and faster and bigger and bigger. But it's really important that on occasions in your in your projects, you actually take time out to reflect uh, and find out what we need to continue doing well and what we need to change to make it even better. And then roles and skills, which, as I mentioned um, earlier on, what behavioral skills have we got? What technical skills do we have? And are people in our project team in the right roles uh, so that we can make use of those? So that's what I call framework mapping. It maps out a framework for you and your project team to work in. Uh, then we move on to the yellow. So the yellow is about collaboration. How openly do people collaborate and share their knowledge and skills with others? Uh, what's our team communication like? Uh, does it work for everyone when we communicate? Uh, Environment is about the culture that you create. So the project, the project environment you work with, um, is it positive? Do you celebrate successes along the way? Uh, 
Um, so is it just a heads down, get on with things, or is there camaraderie that builds a positive culture? Uh, and then transformation is about coming up with new ideas to make things more effective and efficient. So I call those creative interactions. They're interactions between individuals, and invariably there's a creative outcome to them. Uh, and then finally, uh, the, the green. So uh, on the right hand side, we've got commitment. How committed are team members to the success of the team? Uh, then bottom right, do we value and appreciate diversity? Uh, how effective and efficient are our team meetings? You know, do we go to team meetings and um, they start and end on time? Uh, do they come Do our team meetings end with actions that we then review at the next team meeting to make sure that uh, those actions have been delivered? Uh, and then finally, trust. How strong is trust within our team? Uh, do people trust each other so that we can uh, work uh, together collectively as a team? Do we um, work together for team success rather than an individual success? So um, is there a trust around that area? So those are the 16, 16 different elements that make up the model. Uh, and the green is coactive connections. Coactive means they're alive and they're working. Uh, and connections is about relationships with individuals within the team. And um, so the model enables teams to measure their team effectiveness. So um, through a series of, uh, of online anonymous questions, we can understand with a team how effective they feel their, their teamwork is. And as you can see, uh, we've got some other data and information here. We can look at the top eight elements, those things that are working reasonably well. Uh, but we can also see what are the things that are causing this team uh, problems. So uh, with this team, we can see that the bottom three are, are, are all in the, the blue, the framework mapping. They're saying that they're planning, their reflection time and their processes aren't working that well. So um, in doing so, we can we can actually give this team a benchmark to see where it compares with, with other teams. So we can see here this team as an example, their effectiveness is 66%. Uh, high performing teams usually score 85% or above. Uh, this team falls within the average category. Uh, it's in the low end of the averages. And uh, those teams that are developing or, or dysfunctional sometimes, as I call them, they um, you can see that their score uh, is usually below 65%. So as I said, this team is, is an average performing team. And um, we can also look at uh, different other aspects of teamwork. So framework mapping and strategic actions, they, they are all task related. Uh, so this team has scored those as 64%. And then the creative interactions and coactive connections, they're all about relationships between people. So uh, immediately this team could understand that there was an imbalance between task and relationships. Uh, and we could also see that the framework mapping here was the lowest at 55%. And as you can see by the graphical representation with the, the dots, that uh, the four framework mapping elements were the bottom four. So it gave an idea to the team of what they needed to, to work on, but also what they needed to celebrate. Um, you know, decision making was quite good, team meetings and their vision and commitment, all reasonable scores there. Um, so we could see the very good areas of teamwork, uh, the areas that were good, and then the areas that were poor. Uh, so in measuring this, we can then actually do something about it. Now, uh, the other thing to, to, that I like to share with you in this model is that there are different levels. So um, if we look at the elements in level one, which is uh, purpose, trust, planning and collaboration, 
those are the most important things to get right and to make sure that they're working well within your team. Because if those aren't working well, they have the most impact on the whole area of teamwork and effectiveness and efficiency. So um, if, if those are performing badly as a project team, you really need to do something about it. Um, so I thought I'd share with you the, um, uh, the most important one, team purpose. A lot of uh, commentators talk about trust being the most important, but in actual fact, um, team purposes and the, and the, the analogy to bring this to life, I explain is when you actually go and decide that um, you're going to put yourself forward for a particular project job, a particular project role, um, you look at the job description and you start to understand, well, what is the job about and how does that job play into what the project team exists to do, their team purpose? So invariably, you go for that job uh, for an interview based on the job description um, and what the what the team purpose is all about. You actually don't go for that job based on the fact that people trust each other. You don't know who is in that team uh, at that moment in time. So it's, it's the team purpose that is really, really important. So team purpose, the understanding of what the team does, what this enables and the benefits this delivers. And um, again, based on research I've done, uh, four, out of team, four out of 10 team members actually say they don't understand their team purpose. They don't understand their objectives. Uh, and for me, that is absolutely frightening. So uh, if you think about your team and how many people you've got in your team, um, you know, potentially 40% of them actually don't really understand what your team, your project team is existing to do or the objectives of your team. And... Um, so teams who are faced with a problem around team team purpose, I create, I get them to create a team purpose statement. Uh, and this is something that you might consider doing as an activity with, with your project teams. So first of all, uh, a team purpose statement can, is made up of three elements. First of all, what you do, what that enables, and then what are the benefits? So quite simple. So the XYZ team exists to do certain things. That enables other things to happen. And then you should result in some benefits. So a team purpose statement should be motivational. It should motivate you and your team members. It should take no longer than a minute to uh, explain to somebody else. It should have no jargon. Uh, some teams, if they are creating a team purpose statement for an internal organization, then they might use a bit of jargon in it. However, if you are going to share this with people outside of your organization, you should have little or no jargon. And the reason being, you want it to be understandable. You want other people to understand it. So, um, on the screen now, I'm just going to share an example of, of a team that I worked with uh, a few years ago now. Uh, and the this team was in finance. And uh, the team were called the Bean Counters. Their affectionate name was the Bean Counters. So as you can imagine, they had quite a low morale. Uh, other pits of the, other areas of the organization did not value and appreciate what they did. So uh, when I started working with this team, I got into discussion and I said, OK, well, what do you do as a team? And on the top right, you will be able to see what eventually they came back with. To produce monthly accounts that are as accurate as possible as quickly after the month end. Um, I'm sure you'll agree with me. That's not very motivational. 
that's not inspirational. That's not going to get me out of bed enthused to go in and work with this team uh, on a Monday morning each week. So um, we set about reflecting, taking time out from the the day to day activities to actually create a team purpose statement. And this is what they came up with. And I'll give you a couple of moments to read that. And I think you'll you'll agree with me that that's um, slightly more uh, motivational and inspirational than the the original um, thing that they said that they did. Um, so much so that they um, they actually started to feel good about themselves as a team, that they were doing something that was beneficial beneficial for the organisation, and um, as a team they decided to share this with other parts of the other departments in the organization that they work with. And um, I checked back in with them three months later and uh, they said that they were no longer called the bean counters. Their morale, you could, the morale and the, and the positivity was actually tangible. When I walked into their, uh, uh, their department and started chatting to them, you could feel that something quite seismic had changed within them all because they had started to realize that what they did added value to the rest of the organization. So um, it can have some really positive benefits uh, for you and, and your team. Uh, so here's another example. This is, this is my um, team development learning organization. And I keep this top level. So this is my do statement that I exist to provide learning and development solutions. I don't tell people initially that those solutions can be online, face to face, via webinars, speaking at conferences, just very high level. Um, what does this enable? Well, it engages individuals and it motivates teams and the benefits. It um, helps them to um, to achieve even greater success. So. Um, very top level, no jargon. Um, I can tell people within a minute uh, and people understand it and get it. So my recommendation to you is when you're next with your team uh, and you've got some time to undertake this activity. So in your next team meeting, first of all, get people to write down what they think your team purpose is. So get them to write it down individually um, and then get each person to share what they've written, plus share what you've written as well. Um, I think you'll be amazed at what people have written down. Uh, I was working with a, a leadership team of 10 recently in one of our biggest public sector organisations. Uh, and first of all, I challenged them and I said, are you a team? They all said yes. And I said, OK, in that case, what I want you to do is write down what your team exists to do, what your team purpose is. And I got them to share what they've written down and I got 10 different answers. And I said, if I was a leader, a new leader joining your team uh, and I asked Anne what she did and she told me one thing. And then I asked uh, John what he did what the team did, and he told me something else, I'm going to be immediately confused on day one. So um, that led us into the activity of then creating uh, our own team purpose statement. So um, maybe something for you to consider. As I said, team purpose is the most important element of those 16 areas of teamwork. So it's really important that everybody understands what your team exists to do, um, what that enables and the benefits. And of course, if you all create it in doing so, people will buy into it. And then if you get new team members on board your project as the project um, uh, continues through its life cycle, one of the first things I would suggest that you do is, is you share your team purpose 
with those new members uh, of your team. So I hope that's um, just given you some food for thought in terms of team purpose and um, something that you can actually do almost immediately with your team and enhance uh, uh, understanding of, um, of, of your team purpose with team members. So in, in summary, before we go on to questions, um, number one, think about how you and your team can measure your team effectiveness and efficiency, especially if you're um, you know, one of the 99% of teams that aren't measuring their teamwork. Um, as a minimum, ensure everyone knows what your team exists to do. So your team purpose statement, what that enables and the benefits. And three, really importantly, don't be afraid to speak up when you feel um, that your teamwork could be better. Quite often I've sat in team meetings and somebody's mentioned something about their teamwork and they've, they've done it quite sheepishly to start off with. Um, and then as soon as they've shared it with other people, there's nods of heads around the table. So uh, if you think your teamwork could be better, always speak up about it. Um, so thank you for listening. I'm going to take questions in a moment. Um, Sevgan asked me to share this slide here so that you are aware of the courses that are available through through Knowledge Train. Uh, do you want to add anything in terms of this slide, Sevgan? Um, just in terms of this slide, um, if anyone wants any more information, you uh, can always email me. I'm going to quickly pop my email. Alternatively, you can message the chat with the course you are interested in, and I will always email you. So um, that's about it. Thank you so much for the presentation, Nick. Uh, could we Thank move you. on to the Q&A now? If you do have questions, yeah. please pop them in the chat. I know that, um, I think it was Gil that asked a question, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I'm gonna come back online. So I've stopped sharing at the moment. Uh, so that I can see the chat, uh, the chat options. Yep, and um, we do have a question. Okay. Um, it's about the middle of the presentation. Okay. Um, where are we? Okay, from Gail. Hi, Nick. Yeah. Would you recommend profiling team members before commencing project work? Um, yes, Gail. I mean, if you've got the opportunity to do so, I, I would. Um, quite, uh, it wasn't very often. Quite often, we 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 um, uh, we get a project team that's already in situ. Uh, however, I had a, a number of occasions where. I was able to pick and choose who I wanted on my project team. Uh, and therefore, behavioral profiling was really useful to me to uh, understand the different strengths and challenges uh, and skills that different people had. So understanding what my project uh, goals were, what we had to achieve, enabled me to get the right sort of um personality types but also those with the technical skills as well to enable me to create the team that uh, i felt best supported that project so i'd say yeah right from day one you know as i said out of those 16 elements of teamwork trust is is second place so actually uh, understanding people behaviorally is a really good way to to kick start your project so I hope that answers uh, that question for you. Um, have we got any other questions that have come in? I think a few people are typing. Okay. Uh, Becky, you mentioned that you experienced different team members giving different versions of understanding of their team purpose. How did you get them to the same understanding? Um, quite simply, with the with that team, the, the, that leadership team of ten that I mentioned, um, 
I split them into two groups to get them working as, as two groups, five in each group, uh, to then take the best of what they'd all written down. And each of those two groups then created a, a new team purpose statement that they agreed with. And then we shared the two um, and took the best of, of uh, the best of both. So it was it's a lovely way to do it because um, people enjoy working in smaller groups. So and we get different perspectives and we get different views, but we could we can share those views and ideas and then to come to consensus at the end. So, um, yeah, it doesn't take a great deal of time. Uh, I would say that the majority of teams that I work with, usually if it's a, a, a team between 10 and 12 individuals, you can get a, a team purpose statement that everybody's agreed probably within 45 minutes. Uh, and what I say to people then is then just share it with people uh, and just give them time to gather their thoughts and maybe polish it a little bit. Uh, so yes, you can do it quite effectively and quite quite efficiently. So I hope that's given you a, a better understanding of how to do that. Okay, so hopefully Becky, that's that's helped you there. Great. Uh, any other questions from other people? Just while people um, think of questions, I'm just going to quickly um, open a survey. Okay. So if people could fill it out, that would be great. This is where I start panicking. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is surely positive feedback. <laughs> This is nearly as bad as um, looking at my reviews of my book on Amazon <laughs> <laughs> when you get notification of a, of a new review. There's all that, there's always that panic sets in. Is it going to be a good, good or a bad one? I mean, it's uh, fortunately to date, uh, I think um, I looked the, this morning in the 96% of the, the reviews of the book have been five star, but yeah. Um, part way through one of the reviews i got has, has been a two star it's been the only two star review um and it, it was interesting when i read it it was um uh, certainly from someone of a particular behavioral style and type uh, so i can understand i could understand exactly uh why they didn't actually like it, like the way the book had been written I'm sure that's understandable i'm sure your book is great um, it is the best selling on Amazon, right? Yeah, I mean, can we, can we in the poll and I'll just um, just in the last few minutes whilst uh, if people haven't got any other questions, it's OK to end the poll and reshare my screen. Yep. Let me just. Um, right. So if I could just uh, share that as it. Uh, so that uh, let's have a look. Uh, share screen. Yeah. So if if um, if people have enjoyed this and, and do want to um, connect with me, can you can you see that now on screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. yeah. So if if anybody's got any of the questions after the session that they want to share with me please do so. Um, if any of you use LinkedIn, I, I use that actively, uh, probably more so than, than Twitter. I do a lot of articles on LinkedIn. So uh, if you want to continue the learning, then feel free to, to invite me to connect. Um, I'm also on Instagram, so you can see all the places around the world where people are reading, reading Team League Succeed fascinating um so if you're into photos i get people who have bought the book um 
to take a photo of it where in the world they're reading it so um it's been to alaska it's been to uh, uh a deserted beach on on the island of fiji um it's been to the usa it's uh, there's some it, it, there's some quite creative photos that people have taken of it where it's been in the world so please feel free to do have a look at that but yeah any any questions do uh consider connecting with me and uh I'll quite happily answer any questions that spring to mind after this uh, this webinar. Okay, have we got any last questions while I was sharing that? There we go. That's not bad. Five minutes before time. Um, anything that you need to add, Sevgan? Um, no, let's just wait for a few more uh, few minutes. More minutes. I do yeah, think no people are writing, yeah. Cecilia, I do hope you were able to see the presentation. Uh, but just on a side note, it has been recorded and um, I do have the presentation slides. So um, everyone will receive the recording and the um, slides in PDF. We have a question. Okay, uh, let's just see. How do you measure the 16 elements from the model? Um, uh, basically, uh, Carolina, um, people come to me and say, can we actually use the, the, the model? Um, and what happens is there's an online questionnaire so there's um, four, there's only 48 statements, 48 questions that are asked of team team members, individuals. The 48 statement responses are anonymous. So you never get to see what an individual has, has, has scored a particular question. Um, however, their amalgamated results go to produce the, the overall report. So I hope that uh, answers your question, Carolina. If it does, yeah, it does. Great. Good. Any others? Doesn't seem like there's any more questions. No. Yep. Um, I think we can start ending it. Um, okay. So, first of all, thank you so much, Nick, for joining us today. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you um, very much for the opportunity. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. If you do have any questions, um, you can always email myself or Nick. He did provide um, his contact details and it will also be on the slides that I do send out. Um, you will receive the recording and the slides most probably next week. If you are interested in any courses, please feel, uh, free, feel free to email me. Uh, and thank you so much for joining everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, good to meet you virtually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, and thank you very much for your help, Sevgam. No worries, my pleasure. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.